lines, bars, candlesticks. Now it's time to talk charts. Charts are absolutely needed for you to do proper technical analysis. There are so many ways you can look at the price. You could use a line chart, a candlestick chart, or a bar chart. There are range charts, Renko charts, Heikenashi charts. The list goes on, but we only need to focus on just the basics. Time frames. On your trading platform, you will notice that you have various time frames. For example, you get to see what price has done over the past 5 minutes if you select the 5 minute time frame. Lines. The line charts are straightforward. On your trading platform, all you'll see is one continuous line that shows the close price of each period of the time frame you've selected. There's not a lot to see with a line chart if you're a newbie, but you will find it handy to assess the trends and breaks in market structure with enough screen time. The line chart works best for analysis on the higher time frames. Bars. A bar chart has more information than a line chart. It shows you the OHLC, open, high, low, and close of each period within your chosen time frame. The top of the bar is the high price and the bottom is the low price. In a bullish bar, the open price is the bottom dash on the left, while the close is the top dash to the right. The open price is the top left dash for a bearish bar, while the close price is the bottom right dash. Not a lot of people use bar charts at the beginning of their forex journey. However, if you'd like to try, but you find them confusing, just know the open is always to your left and the close is to your right. Bearish bars have higher opens and lower closes than bullish ones. Candlesticks. They're not the same as the ones you'd use on a romantic date, but they do bear some similarity to those. Called Japanese candlesticks, they show you the same open, high, low, and close of each period in a way that's easier on the eyes. Always wait for the candle to close before taking your trade so you don't get faked out. Likewise, never take a trade when a closed candle doesn't confirm it. A candlestick is made up of the body and the shadow or wick. The wick may be either on the upside, downside, both sides, or non-existent as in a marubozu candle. Put together, they can show you patterns in price, so you know if it's time to reverse or if the present trend will continue. Candlestick patterns are powerful when they show up at critical levels. The bodies are the filled in areas of the candlesticks. The bearish candles are black or red. The bullish ones are white or green. The lines are sticking out of either end are the wicks or shadows. Your charting platform should have the option to change the colors. If you're using the popular MT4 platform, the candles will be lime and black. However, if you prefer the traditional lime and red or a blue and red of bullish and bearish colors, respectively, it's easy to adjust. Some traders use only one color for both so that they can really focus on price action. When the bullish candle has a long body, that means there is a lot of buying presence or volume in that bar. When it's a bearish candle with a strong, long body, it indicates selling pressure. However, if you look at the chart above, you'll notice that you can see strong bearish and bullish candles that still wound up reversing. So what gives? Forex is about having a statistical edge. We know that these candle behaviors imply certain things most of the time, not all the time. When there is a long shadow or wick, it means that the price had pushed past the open or close price during that period. When the wicks are short, it shows traders tried to push the price in that direction, but they failed. Long lower wicks show that there's bullish strength coming into the market in anticipation of higher prices. Conversely, long upper wicks show the bears are stepping into the market, potentially lowering the price. Spinning tops are candles that have long wicks on both sides with a petite body. They suggest that the price opened, tried to push up or down, but failed, then tried to push down or up only to fail again. In terms of market sentiment, this is a clear mark of indecision between both bulls and bears. A marubozu is a candle that has a long body, either bullish or bearish, with no wicks at all. This means that the open price of that period is equal to its lowest price in a bullish marubozu, or the open price of that period is the same as the high in a bearish marubozu. A doji has a very short body like a line, and the open and close prices are pretty much the same. 
this could mean there's no volatility, or the market is pausing before another big move to continue its present trend, whether up or down, or reverse completely. If you notice a doji after a sequence of strong, long candles, that means buying strength is weakening. If you see it after strong selling pressure, that means the sellers are cooling off. Candlestick Patterns Two or more candlesticks can create patterns that let us know if the trend will continue or reverse. Unfortunately, there are too many candlestick patterns out there, so we will focus on just the ones you will find the most useful, mainly when applied to significant price levels. Tweezers show up at the end of an extended downtrend or uptrend in the market and suggest that the market might be looking to reverse. Engulfing candles can be bullish or bearish. With a bullish engulfing candle, the candle's body engulfs the previous candle. When these candles show up, you can expect the price to take off with strength in that direction. Chart Patterns To be an effective technical analyst, you should also be able to see the patterns in that chart that play out repeatedly. They let you know if the price is going to continue or reverse. They let you know when you should stay out of the market or get out of a trade. You can use these patterns along with candlestick formations to add more confluence to why you should or shouldn't take a trade. Reversal and Continuation Patterns You can find chart patterns in times of reversals or continuations. The way you interpret each one depends on several factors. Still, the bottom line is they'll let you know if you should expect the price to continue the present trend, as is the case with continuation patterns, or if the price is going to reverse, as reversal patterns indicate. These patterns can also show up in ranging markets, letting you know what will happen when the market stops ranging. There isn't an exact science to these patterns, but with practice, you come to know where they form and why, and if they're valid to your setup. When you reach a certain level of proficiency, you will know which patterns are your bread and butter and which rob you to pay your broker. Head and Shoulders This pattern is a reversal pattern. It comes at the top of an uptrend or the bottom of a downtrend, inverse head and shoulders. These patterns have four parts to them, which, when present, could mean you're about to catch a massive move the other way. An actual head and shoulder pattern will have a shoulder or swing high, and then a higher swing, which is the head, and then a swing high lower than the head, which forms the second shoulder. The last ingredient to this recipe is the neckline, which you will find by drawing a trend line to connect the swing lows of this pattern. This neckline acts as an area of resistance for you to sell from. When the first shoulder is formed, price moves up to a new high or down to a new low, then peaks as it creates a swing high or low before pulling back or rising. The short retracement is then succeeded by a climb higher or lower before hitting an all-time high, low, for that period. Then the market will pull back to make a new swing high or low, which sets up the head higher or lower than the shoulder. Price will then push back up to a level at or around the first shoulder and then pull back to create the second one. It is at this point that the price then breaks the neckline to create the full pattern. You can enter on the break of the neckline, or better yet, wait for a pullback and a new swing to form to get a better entry with less drawdown. When you have less drawdown, trading just works out for you better psychologically. You should keep the volume in mind when you're trading the head and shoulder pattern. Usually, the trading volume picks up at the break of the neckline and gives you extra confluence or confirmation about your bias. To set your take profit for this trade, measure the distance between the neckline and head. Then, take that exact measurement and apply it from the neckline down or up in your trade direction. This level is where you should take partial profits, trail your stops, or close the trade. Symmetrical Triangles These are great for illustrating ranging markets or a period where bulls and bears are indecisive about where to push the price next. Usually, when the price ranges or is in a triangle, it's also at a state of equilibrium, with equal supply and demand in the market. You can use symmetrical triangles to help you work out when to get into the market. The pattern usually leads to a continuation of the previous trend. For instance, if the trend before the triangle formed was moving up, you can expect the triangle to break to the upside above the descending support line. On the flip side, if the trend was bearish, you can expect a downward break. This doesn't work all the time, though. 
not just because not everything is accurate in Forex, but because the market makers know these patterns and deliberately set them up for traders to hop on. If you are a scalper, you might be able to get your pips and get out. If you're a day trader or a swing trader, then you might find it wise to fade the moves. Since 99% of traders often lose money, it's smart to not do the same things that they all learn from the same textbook. A meeting of two trend lines creates the triangle, one ascending and one descending. The lines ideally have the same slope and come together at the same point. Each swing high and swing low created, the lower highs and higher lows, grows closer, respecting the shape of the triangle. You'll notice that the trading volume is low at this time. Price will bounce back and forth between both lines, and as it gets close to the meeting point, there'll be a breakout. To trade this one by the book, you can put a pending buy order above the descending trend line and a pending sell order below the ascending trend line. This way, whichever way it moves, you'll be triggered into the trade and you can grab your pips. You could use an OCO order for this so that when one is activated, the other is cancelled. Ascending Triangles These have a flat top that acts as resistance and an ascending trend line on the bottom that acts as support. A series of higher lows form the ascending trend line. The pattern shows continuation and is seen as bullish. You can rely on the pattern a lot more when it shows up as part of an uptrend. Like with a symmetrical triangle, the price will bounce around both lines of the triangle and then it will break to the upside. You can also find them in bearish market conditions, but they won't be as powerful. Also, keep in mind that price can break to the downside to fake you out. To trade this, you can take the breakout to the upside by setting a buy stop order above the resistance zone, or you could wait for the breakout to play out and then take the next swing low as your entry. Descending Triangles These are the opposite of ascending triangles in that they are indicative of bearish continuations. So, they show up in a downtrend. If they show up in an uptrend, you probably won't do so well trying to short them. The descending triangle has a flat bottom or support and a resistance trend line that slopes downwards, created by the progressively lower swing highs in that range. Price will bounce between both lines until it finally breaks to the downside, or it could break to the upside to fake you into a move and fake you out of some pips. To catch this move, set a sell stop below the support or wait for the break in a brand new swing high before you take a trade. Flags and Pennants These are continuation patterns as well, and they happen right after strong moves in price. After the strong move, there's a period of consolidation, and that's where you find this pennant or flag. When price forms a rectangle, it's called a flag. When it forms a triangle, it's called a pennant. When the price moves powerfully in one direction, the market needs to pause for a bit to accumulate more orders in a range, and then it can continue up or down to its target. The pennant or flag is an excellent pattern for breakout traders to use. These patterns are either bullish or bearish. The bullish flags and pennants show up after a solid move to the upside, while the bearish ones happen after a strong downward push. Wedges Distinctly different from the wedgies you got in grade school, these patterns are created over much more extended periods than others. They can represent reversals or continuations, and they are shaped almost like symmetrical triangles. Again, there are rising wedges and falling wedges. The rising wedge is created when the price starts to the range, bound by support and resistance lines that slope to the upside. You'll notice that the support line is a lot steeper than the resistance. Because of the higher lows, price forms faster than the higher highs. This is what gives the wedge its very distinct shape. So, when you catch a rising wedge, expect some serious movement to come. When there's a rising wedge that comes after an uptrend, it suggests there might be a reversal coming up soon. But on the other hand, when it forms as part of a downtrend, then there's a chance the downtrend will continue. In other words, this pattern is bearish because it always leads to a downward push regardless of the trend. With the falling wedge, you can expect that price will push to the upside no matter the trend. Rectangles These chart patterns happen when the price is bound by parallel lines, which act as support and resistance. Here, the market is at equilibrium, which is the same as a consolidation or ranging market, as I've mentioned before. 
This pattern shows indecision about where the price is heading. Some traders love this pattern because they can short at the top of the range and go long at the bottom. But consolidations don't last. Eventually, there will be a breakout or a fakeout to one side and then a true breakout the other way. The smarter way to avoid being faked into the wrong move is to wait for the price to really break out of the rectangle, retest a new level, and show a willingness to continue in that direction with a strong close. Price movement can follow the direction of the trend before the rectangle forms, but you know what I'm about to say again. Not everything in Forex is… you know the rest. Just keep in mind that when a breakout happens, the move can be very massive. So, wait for the price to pull back to the point of origin of the explosive movement, show signs of finding support or resistance, create a new swing low or high, and then get in a trade. Double tops, double bottoms, triple tops, and triple bottoms. These are chart patterns that show reversals. When you see them, there's a chance that the trend is about to shift dramatically. For example, after an uptrend in a double top formation, the price will form a high. Then, it will pull away, attempt to create a higher high, and then fail at or before or just slightly above the previous swing high. The break of the most recent swing low is extra confirmation, so you can wait to get in on the first swing high that forms after the swing low violation. With a triple top, the same attempt to push up higher happens two more times before the price pushes the other way sharply. You can enter after the next swing high formed or go to a lower time frame to find one you can use to join the trend. When it's a double bottom, the price hits an all-time low after a prolonged downtrend. Next, it pushes away from a level, creating support. Then, price retraces then pushes down once more. It fails to go further than the first low or only manages to push just a little after it or even fails to hit the first low. Then, price rallies. The break of the last swing high created validates this pattern. You can take long trades after the price has pulled back a bit and formed a new swing low after the violation or scale down to lower time frames to join the move. Remember to only look for these after the market has been trending for a long time. You will get much better results if you wait for them to play out on the 4 hour chart. Even if you're a scalper, you could set a price alert for that level and then when the level is hit, you can go down to lower time frames to hunt for trades. Remember, you shouldn't take any trade until the market structure on the lower time frame breaks the other way, showing you that the price on the time frame is ready to line up with the higher time frame premise you have. A final note on trading patterns. So, you open up your chart, and hey, there's that head and shoulders pattern you just learned about. Without waiting, you pull the trigger on a sell trade. It will go down for sure, so you think. Next thing you know, the price begins to go up, pulling away from your entry. You can't stand that you're now negative 10 pips, maybe even more. This isn't how it was supposed to go, you think, so you close the trade. Or you get taken out of the trade because the price hit your stop loss. But then, a few hours later, the price does push down as you thought it would. So what went wrong with that trade? The setup was fine. Your entry, however, could use some work. If you want to make it in Forex, you need to master the fine art of patience. Money always moves from the impatient to the patient. Breakout traders can be profitable, but the trader who has 10 times more of a chance to make money is the one who always gets in on the pullbacks. When price moves, it does one of three other things besides go up, down, or sideways. These are the three phases of price in motion in an established trend. One push, two, pull back, three, pause. Breakout traders get in on the push, which is after the move has long begun. This means they have to have wider stop losses and are likely to suffer drawdown when the price enters phase two of its movement, the pullback or retracement. Now, you should still wait before you put in your order because you have no idea how far back the price will retrace. After the price is done retracing, it will pause for a couple of candles, maybe more. If you're adept at reading price action and you notice the price is at a significant level, old support or resistance on higher time frames, round figure prices, and 500 prices, then you could get in here. However, the best thing for you to do is wait for one candle to close strong in the direction of the trend. 
This candle will be your trigger candle and it will let you know where to put your stop loss. Technical Trading Strategies Let's talk trends. You might have heard it said that the trend is your friend. When it comes to trading, this is so true. Don't try to fight it or you will get burned. You should understand the conditions of the market before you get into a trade. Then, when you know if the market is pushing up or down, you can get in and enjoy the ride with it. Remember, retail money doesn't even touch what the banks trade with, so why try to fight them by picking tops and bottoms when you could simply ride along with them? The market does one of three things. Push up, uptrend. Push down, downtrend. Consolidate or move sideways, move up and down within a fixed range. In an uptrend, the price makes higher highs and higher lows. To easily recognize an uptrend, you can draw a line connecting the higher lows together. As long as the price stays above that line, called a trend line, you should only look for buys. In a downtrend, the price makes lower lows and lower highs. To make the downtrend clear to you, you can draw a trend line that connects the lower highs to one another. As long as the price continues to trade below the trend line, you're good to sell. When the market ranges, price is still moving up and down but only in a defined area. This is also called consolidation or a sideways moving market. Sometimes, the price will have issues with breaking up and past a certain level. That area where price keeps running from is known as resistance. When price can't break through a specific area on the downside and it only keeps bouncing away, that area is called support. This will become more important to you later. Generally, ranging markets don't have a clear directional bias and price doesn't have to get all the way to the top or the bottom of the consolidation on each move. One fantastic tool that can help you figure out your trading decisions is Fibonacci, which you can use to figure out trending markets. The better tools to use when the market is ranging are support and resistance levels and pivot points. In a trending market, the price continues to make new lows, downtrend, or new highs. But price doesn't just shoot all the way down or up. Regardless of what direction it's trending in, it will make a little move the other way. The small movement is called retracement or a pullback. When the price resumes the trend after the retracement and breaks the most recent higher high or lower low, it creates a swing. You can also call the lows and highs swing lows and swing highs. In a way, you could say these swings are little supports and resistances too. When the trend is valid, the price shouldn't break the previous swings. If it does, that's a break in market structure and could signify a change in trend direction, so you'd better not try to trade against the trend or you will get burned. More on support and resistance. Support and resistance are vital to technical analysis. Traders have many opinions about what counts as support and resistance and whether they work well for trading. One of the reasons for this debate is that sometimes you'll find that price blasts through these levels, and other times they won't quite reach them before turning around and heading the other way. The best traders know that support and resistance isn't a line on the chart, but an area. When you factor that into your trading, you will see more profitable movements and you can get in on the move earlier than others who are indecisive about what direction to trade in. Support and resistance form as a result of market activity and general market sentiment. When traders sense the price is moving too fast to the upside or overbought, the market resists further buying. The consensus is that any price above that level would simply be too high, and no one is willing to buy at a premium when they should rather buy at a discount. Here's the thing though, the price is at a premium. There is no demand but plenty of supply. So, buyers liquidate their positions, and bears rush in at those levels, sending it down, creating resistance. The same thing happens when price can't push any lower than a level. It's the market sentiment that the market is oversold and shouldn't go any lower than that. No one wants to sell at a discount because they'd lose money. So, sellers liquidate their positions, bulls rush in, and that buying pressure confirms the area price ran up from as support. Support and resistance, market maker style. These moves could lead to insane explosions the other way or just a bit of retracement. 
If you want to trade them like a pro, think as the market makers do. Most people learn to sell at resistance and buy at support. The buyers put their buy stops below the support levels. If you were a bank, what would you do? Gun for the stop losses, of course. This is why support and resistance seem not to work. The big boys have the funds to drive the price down to those lows. When they do that, two things happen. Breakout traders, traders who like to trade the break of support and resistance as continuation moves to their respective directions, are induced to take sell positions. Buyers who had their stop losses placed at those levels are tagged out. Now, the buyers, who were actually right, are scared to jump back in for a buy, while sellers are getting greedy and placing their stop losses above the broken support. So, what do the banks do when they've gotten enough sellers? Remember, they are the liquidity providers. Unfortunately, the liquidity is dumb money and the other hedge funds that don't know what they're doing. So, when dumb money is selling below that support level, the smart money is buying from them. When the big boys have enough liquidity, they push the prices all the way back up again, gunning for the liquidity pockets at the next swing high. You can repeat this same scenario for the resistance side. Price rallies past resistance, and everyone thinks they should buy. Stop losses are hit, buy stops are triggered. The smart money drove the price above that level, and there, they sell to every willing buyer. Once they have amassed enough liquidity, what do they do? They drive the price the other way, gunning for the next pocket of liquidity at the next swing low. Now, remember what I just shared with you about market structure? The question is, how do you know when to get in on those moves? You want to look for the market structure to break and get back in line with your bias after the price has shot through the resistance and support levels. In Forex, the most profitable traders are the ones who know how to sit on their hands and wait for confirmation before pulling the trigger. Only amateurs try to catch falling knives. The best of traders wait for the market to show its hand and then respond accordingly. They trade what they see, not what they think or feel. Pivot Points You can use pivot points to work out support and resistance levels that are valid and might show you a genuine opportunity to anticipate a change in price action. They offer you levels where price might reverse or targets the price must hit before you can accept a breakout of support or resistance as valid. There are various ways to calculate pivot points, but you can just let your charting platform handle that for you automatically. It still doesn't hurt to understand how it arrives at those points though. The most common way to calculate them is by using the five point system where the high, low, and close are added and then divided by three. Pivot point equals high plus low plus close divided by three. Support one equals pivot point times two. Resistance one equals pivot point times two. Support two equals pivot point minus high minus low. Resistance equals pivot point plus high minus low. Pivot points in day trading. Some scalpers take significant positions and get in and out of trades after just a few minutes, only looking for two or three pips per trade. Then, there are day traders who have trades that last a few hours or a couple of days tops. Swing traders can hold their positions for days, while position traders can hold for weeks and months. You have to work out what kind of person you are to figure out which works best for you. If you're patient and don't change your mind easily, Stick to swing trading and position trading on higher time frames from the 4 hour chart and up. If you're a scalper, you could use the 1 minute, 5 minute, or even tick charts. The day trader can use the 15 minute chart up to the 4 hour chart. If you're a day trader, you're going to love pivot points. They let you know strong support and resistance areas in the market, and you can expect big moves from these levels. It's either the price will rip right through these levels or will reject them for massive moves. Pivot points help you work out when a trend is likely to occur. When price breaks below a pivot point, you can expect a downtrend to form, possibly. In the same way, if it breaks above, you can expect an uptrend. Remember, you should only ever buy at a discount and sell at a premium. If the price is below the central pivot point, then this is an excellent time to consider looking for longs if the general trend of the market is up on a higher time frame. If the higher time frame, H4 and up, 
seems to be bearish, then you should only look for shorts on lower time frames at the resistance areas so that you're selling at a premium. Remember, you want the bullish market structure on the lower time frame to break and change to bearish before selling. When buying, wait for the bearish trend on a lower time frame to break and become bullish. Understand that what you think of as a trend on the lower time frames could be just a retracement on the higher ones. If you frame your trades based on higher time frames, you will have more winners than losers and massive ones at that. Please note that pivot points are recalculated each day as they rely on the results of the day before. So this is a short term indicator. The smart call would be to use the higher time frames to plot these points and then stalk those levels on the lower time frames until you get a break of structure the correct way and you have other confluence in the form of candlestick formations and so on. Pivots for entries and exits. These points are also handy as an indication of when your trade should start and when you should close your positions or take the bulk of them off the market. Say, price pushes and breaks past the pivot point. This could be your entry signal. Then you could set your stop loss just above the pivot point, making sure it's above the most recent swing high so you don't get tapped out prematurely. The first support level can be your target or the first resistance level if you're buying. If you don't set a take profit and would rather trail your stop, you could decide to get out if you notice the price has continued past that support level. Or you could close part of your position and move your stop to break even so that the trade is risk free. Then the next support level would be your next target or the next resistance level if you're buying. When you are strategic about how you enter and exit with the help of pivots, you will find that you take advantage of the pips the market offers you and you also get added peace of mind since you don't have to worry about what to do to manage your trades. When it comes to pivot points, you should have some caution as you trade. You can't predict the markets, so please don't assume that the market must respect all pivot points. Some days it will play nicely by the rules. Other days, it acts like a teenager who just hit puberty and wants to rage against the machine. So don't go betting your future Lambo on one trade, thinking that will make you rich. That's not how this works. If the price is just hovering around a pivot point, then you might not be able to tell where it's going. There's a deadly effective fix for that. Most people don't use it, but I'm giving you this one for free. Sit on your hands. If that doesn't work, just walk away. Later, when the market has shown a clear push to one direction and a refusal to break the swing that caused that push, you can hunt for a new setup. Then, when the price returns to the origin of the push and refuses to break the swing, you can take trades in the push direction. Volume. You know what volume is, and I mentioned before that it's crucial. It's the number of trades going on in the market at any given time. It also lets you know whether the market is interested in sending a pair to the moon or the abyss. Your charting software should offer you volume levels if it's a good one. You can find them at the bottom of your chart. If you're using good old MT4, just hit Ctrl L and you should see the levels at the bottom of your chart. Now, here's the other thing about the volume I neglected to mention until now. There is no accurate way to measure it in Forex because the sheer number of the trades that are placed daily is ridiculous. Moreover, there's no central organization that can monitor the number of transactions. That said, market makers know the approximate transaction volumes at all times and we can track them. Each volume bar at the bottom of your chart shows you how much trading activity went on during that period. In our case, each volume bar shows the volume for 4 hours of trading. The bars also let you know whether there were more sellers than buyers or vice versa. You should always keep an eye on volume, as it can add confluence to the trade setups you consider or can help you back out of a trade that would have been a loser. When there's a movement in price along with a comparably higher trading volume than usual, then you can trust that move a lot more than if the levels were relatively lower than normal. In practical terms, always check to see if the volumes support your analysis. The volume moves in line with the actual trend of the market. 
So as the trend blossoms and gathers momentum in one direction, there will be an increase in volume, which confirms that there truly is a lot of money moving that way, and you can decide to join in on that when the price offers you a retracement for a better entry. Don't just go short or long because the volume bar was strong. Always get into your trades at a retracement, or at least right after the push phase of the move resumes after the price has shown it's done pulling back. When the volume goes down, that means the trend is about to end, or it's pausing at least. So it's an excellent time to take out some money from the market and make sure any running trades won't be a risk or a possible loss no matter what happens next. Moving Averages A moving average is an indicator that lets you smooth out the ups and downs of price over a set period so that you can tell what the currency pair has been up to. Usually, a price chart shows all the details when it comes to price fluctuation. All this detail is not a bad thing if you know what to look for, but when it's a lot, it makes it hard to see when there's a trend being formed or when a setup for a good trade is happening. With the moving average, you can smooth out the price fluctuations by plotting only the average price values, so it looks a lot smoother. When you plot a moving average on your chart, it is easier to tell it's a downtrend because the price action is averaged out, and the jagged closes you'd find on a line chart are fewer. Sure, moving averages are lagging indicators. Every indicator is a lagging indicator, actually, since they all follow the price. Still, you don't need to be the first in a trade to be profitable. The moving average is calculated based on the average closing prices for a pair over the last X number of periods. A period could be the last 5 candles or the last 200. You get to decide. The higher the period you use, the smoother the action will look on the chart. The smoother it is, then the slower it will react to the price fluctuations in the short term. The more rugged the line is, the closer it is to real-time price. There are different kinds of moving averages. You have the simple moving average. In Forex speak, it's called the SMA. Then there's the exponential moving average, known as the EMA. There's also the smoothed moving average, also called the SMMA for short and the LWMA, or Linear Weighted Moving Average. Fun fact, if you set up the last one to a period of 1, what you'll see is the exact same thing as a standard line chart of price in real time. For the purposes of this book, and making pips, we'll focus on just the SMA and EMA. The Simple Moving Average. This is the most straightforward average of them all in terms of calculation. The math behind it is to add x number of price closes and then divide them by x. The value you get is dependent on the periods you set. To calculate a 14 period SMA on a 5 minute chart, you'd take the close prices of each of the last 14 5 minute periods or candles and then sum them up. Then you'd divide the number you get by 14. Fortunately, you don't have to work all this out on your own. Your charting platform has got you covered and will plot a line to show you the value of the 14 SMA. Still, it's good to know the idea behind moving averages so that you can figure out how to make them work for you in your trading, depending on the settings you use. Again, the moving average is a lagging indicator that only gives you clear hindsight of what price has done in the past. So don't think of it as a predictor of price or a crystal ball you can use to see where it goes next. Nothing is 100% accurate in 4x, and anyone who tells you so is trying to steal your money. That said, these moving averages are really great to help you highlight probable emerging trends. I say probable because, for the upteenth time, nothing is 100% accurate in 4x. As you gain more experience with this indicator, you'll learn how to use it along with your analysis of the charts to spot good trading setups to take advantage of. The SMA is a great way to get a bird's eye view of what's happening in the markets, but sometimes when the price makes a rapid spike of several pips above its usual daily range, then you can't trust what the averages are saying. This is especially the case with the smaller time frames. If you try to trade with the averages after a considerable spike, many pips up or down, then you're going to find yourself in tears. So a good rule of thumb is to go on the higher time frame and take a look at what price is really doing, 
Or better yet, stay out of the markets until the next day when prices should have corrected. The Exponential Moving Average The EMA addresses some of the SMA issues, being the latter can be a tad too slow. EMAs react to the price a lot faster so that when a price spike happens, its calculation accounts for the rapid price change. You can still get a false signals with this, but it's less rampant than with the SMA. EMAs are calculated by placing more focus on the values of the recently closed candles and less emphasis on the ones further back in time. This allows you to have a lot more accuracy as you watch what's going on with the charts in the short term. EMAs are a lot more responsive than SMAs, and a lot of traders prefer to use them. That doesn't mean the SMA has no value, as its slow reaction can keep you out of false moves. How to use your moving averages Moving averages are a great addition to your strategy when you know how to use them. When the moving average is moving up and is below the actual value of price, then that means there's an uptrend underway. When the moving average is heading down and the price is below it, there's a downtrend in play. Hang on, if it's really that simple, why isn't everyone making money in 4x? Well, there are so many reasons, but I'll focus on the topic at hand. The thing is, moving averages aren't always straightforward. For instance, if you look at both images, you'll notice that there are times when price pierces through the moving averages in the other direction, only to resume its original trend. To combat the problem of false signals, one thing you can and should do is to use price action. Wait for a break in a significant swing high or low, a retest of the broken swing, and then a push away from that level before you validate the change in trend shown by your moving average. These false breaks happen a lot, and if you don't understand price action and only use one moving average, your trading account will be whipsawed into a margin call. The false breaks are usually caused by some unexpected news or an event that causes the market some brief excitement before it settles. Every time there's news, the price may move erratically, but in the end, it will always go back to its original trend. You might find that the line is on the wrong side of the price, which makes you think there's a reversal. But, of course, you'll fall for this trick less when you choose to keep your eyes on the price first, using the moving average to only add confluence to your setups. Besides learning market structure and price action, traders use more than one moving average to keep themselves out of false moves and get more reliable ideas about what price might do next. Plot two moving averages on your chart if you're struggling to work out which moves are fake and which aren't. This way you'll have a more unambiguous indication of the present trend in price. One moving average will need to be slower than the other for this to work. The first one will allow you to take setups in line with the trend shown by the slower one. In an uptrend, the faster MA will be above the slower one, while in a downtrend, the slower one will be above the quicker. Whatever you do, don't just trade the crossover of two moving averages. Instead, always wait for the price to pull back and show a readiness to resume trends. This is because crossovers can be misleading too, and in range, Market conditions moving average crossovers are unhealthy for your account balance. We'll talk more about crossovers in a bit. Moving averages for momentum. You need to be able to tell the price momentum at any given time. Momentum is a fancy way of describing the strength with which price is moving. You can use moving averages to work out the market momentum. The way to do this is with various moving averages applied to different time frames. For instance, the shorter-term momentum is evident when you use a moving average period of 20 or less. For the mid-term momentum, any period from 21 to 100 is acceptable. As for the long-term momentum, use periods above the 100 or the classic 200 period moving average. This means you'll have at least three moving averages on your chart. When you have the short-term moving average above the other two slower ones, then this means you have a bullish condition in the market especially when the fastest one pulls away from the others. Conversely, when the market is bearish, you'll have the reverse condition playing out on your chart. Trading MA Crossovers You can use the way two moving averages work with each other to work out your buys and sells. You could even use three moving averages. 
In this case, the slowest moving average lets you know if you should focus only on buying or selling, while the faster two show you when you should start looking for trades as they cross back in the same trend shown by the slowest one. When the fastest EMA crosses the slower one to the upside, that's called a bullish crossover. When it crosses the slower one to the downside, it's a bearish crossover. When you have the short-term moving average above the other two slower ones, then this means you have bullish conditions in the market, especially when the fastest one pulls away from the others. Conversely, when the market is bearish, you'll have the reverse condition playing out on your chart. Moving averages as dynamic support and resistance. Moving averages can be used as support and resistance, and they can work even better for this purpose when you're eyeballing the chart. Why? Because while everyone sees something different on their charts and has subjective views on what makes support and resistance, the moving average is drawn by its price, which means it's objective. It may lag, but in this sense, it does not lie. Go over the charts posted here and notice areas where the averages acted as resistance or support to price. Moving averages for entries. You can use the moving average to work out your entries into a trade. For example, Say you had a good setup, but you were late getting into the trade. However, the price is still at a discount for a buy or a premium for a sell, so you want to get in at a reasonable price with a stop loss that isn't wider than needed. When the price crosses back down the moving average in line with the trend, and you get a candle close below the average, that is when you should pull the trigger. For now, if you're trading on the majors and other pairs with low spreads, you can get away with a 10 pip stop if you enter trades this way on the 15 minute and even 5 minute charts. As you gain more experience and become more confident in your trading, you can actually fine tune your stop loss to be even lower than that. What happens when you take trades based on higher time frame targets with lower time frame entries? You rake in more pips than the average trader. The only thing that could possibly stand in the way of you making money is your emotions, specifically greed and fear. Greed makes you take positions too large for your account. Fear makes you cut trades too early. Learn to sit on your hands and you will do better than most. Moving Average Ribbons A moving average ribbon is made up of various moving averages plotted with different periods on your chart. The idea behind using ribbons is that rather than just using one or three, you've got a whole bunch, from about 6 of them to 16, or even more. It might seem like a lot, but multiple moving averages can tell you everything you need to know about the strength of the trend, upcoming reversals, chances to enter new trades, and more. Looking at the ribbon, the trader can work out the trend's strength by looking at the expansion that has occurred. The smoothness and alignment of the averages, as well as important support and resistance areas to keep an eye on, the averages in a moving average ribbon depend solely on the trader's discretion. Some traders love to use about 6 or 8 simple moving averages, all set 10 periods apart from one another. Some use even more, from the 50 to 200 periods and more in between. The longer term averages help you identify the overall trend. Some traders use linear weighted moving averages for their ribbons, and others stick with the exponential. It all comes down to your preference. If you want your moving average ribbon to be more or less responsive, you can adjust the numbers of periods you use or you could change the kind of moving average you use. Remember, exponential averages react faster than simple ones and the shorter the periods you set, the quicker they will react to price action. Ribbon Trading When the moving average ribbon expands, that means there's a potential trend beginning. When you notice the moving averages getting wider apart and fanning out, that condition is called ribbon expansion. It could mean that the trend is coming to an end. It's like the moving averages are all magnets drawn to each other by price action. They don't like being far apart for long, so the price will cause them to close the gaps any time that happens. When the moving average ribbon is contracting, that could also signal a change in the trend. This is called ribbon contraction. When the price has moved significantly in one direction for a while, the shorter term moving averages will start to converge. The longer term moving averages will join as well, but slower. If you add that convergence along with price action, you just could catch the start of a new, monstrous trend the other way. When the moving average ribbon has all averages parallel to one another, a strong trend is underway. 
you don't want to buck that if you're a reversal trader. It is best to wait for the convergence to start and then use other methods to see if you're right about the trend change. Alternatively, you could choose to get in on the trend by buying the dips if the market is moving up or selling the rallies if the market is moving down. Remember to apply the push-pull back-pause philosophy to your entries to make them tighter. You should always watch the space between all the moving averages. Sadly, new traders tend to ignore this and only ever focus on the twists and crossovers, nothing more. So while you should keep a finger on the pulse for the shorter term moving averages as they cross below or above the longer term ones, you should definitely keep an eye out for the spacing between them as well. The position of the longer term moving averages relative to the shorter term ones will show you the trend direction, whether that's up, down, or neutral. The space between the averages indicates the trend's strength, whether strong, weak, or neutral.